a few weeks ago in Call of Dragons, I was doing through the usual grinding in hunting darklings, but I was sending single mage marches out. They get busted a little and I had to send them back to my city to be replenished only to be sent out again. This was not only taking too much time, but this was actually not the proper way of hunting darklings and even worse, not the best use of my CP. After speaking to a fellow member of my alliance, we were talking about what is actually the best and most efficient way to farm darklings. It was a revelation and I started to notice several other more experienced members of my alliance doing this. So you're probably wondering, okay, so what is it? Let me show it to you right now as you will not only save a lot of time but will also be for the best use of your CP. Now is also a good time to subscribe to the channel, like the video and turn on your notifications bell for more amazing videos. When you start a new season, you can only assign individual heroes so you can only use three heroes that you would primarily be utilizing to rank up. However, as you go a few weeks into the game, you can then select three pairs of heroes that you would primarily be utilizing for Darkling farming. In my opinion, I tend to always focus on a mage build, an archer's build, and an infantry build. I love Garwood as my main infantry tank, then I love Lilia as my primary mage hero, and finally I love Nico for my archer hero. When Garwood, Lilia, and Nico reaches level 30, I will surely pair them with Atheist, Velen, and Kinara respectively. I have set up and saved on my formation. I would recommend that you do the same. So we are going to be sending out Garwood in front. He's going to be tanking for me, thus intercepting and obstructing the Darklings from attacking my mages and archers at the back. If we only attack Darklings that don't have range, my mages and archers in the back does not get attacked at all. So I always go for infantry or riders Darklings. So let me show you how this works. These are infantry Darklings. I always have the infantry using a healing artifact. I have the tier of Arbon equipped. As you can see, I quickly activate my artifacts, healing my infantry and making massive damages on the Darklings using the Shadow Blade and Infernal Flame skills as soon as they become available. This reduces the health points of the Darklings, this making their attacks against my infantry less damaging. During the entire battle with the Darklings, as long as I do not engage any Warlock or Archers, my backline will be completely full of health the entire time. Then, as long as I keep activating Divine Mercy, which is the skill of Tier of Arbon, I can continue to heal up my infantries. Another tip, if you don't know this already, you can move all your marchers up to 5 marchers at castle level 21 using this list selection at this corner. Then select or deselect the units that you want, click on the destination that you want to march towards. If you're using a PC, you want to right click on your mouse. This makes it super easy and super fast in sending multiple marches towards the same destination. Then wait until your artifacts cooldown is over before you attack the next Darkling. Let me show you quickly whilst we march towards our destination. Each of the attacks will only cost 40 CP, which is the lowest you can typically get them to. So I'm already saving myself CPs for each attack going forward. Now let me show you another attack on Darkling Riders. Do you remember the unit system advantage? Infantry will all Always have advantage over riders. So using this darkling farming technique on darkling riders is actually even more advantages over infantry. Watch this battle as to how fast the darkling riders get annihilated. Look how little damage my infantry actually takes. Both my mages and archers never takes any damage either when attacking darkling riders. Now whilst my gar would let infantry's health points are still pretty high, but what do we do when they become pretty low? When you keep your troops out in the open field, attack after attack after attack, I've already mentioned that it costs less and less after attacks until a minimum attack cost of 40 CP per attack is reached. So it is always more efficient for you to keep your troops out there without returning to base. However, when your guard would let infantry's health points become pretty low, we need to send him and him alone back to refresh his troops. Then I will send him out again, whilst my mages and archers will stay out in the open field and I will never need to send them back home. Finally, some of you are probably wondering, does all my heroes earn the same hero's experience points equally? Yes, they do. Let me show you 
some reports. From the most recent attack, Lilia and Velen received 14,800k of Heroes experience points, Kinara and Nico the same, and behold, Gawood and Atheist the same. Now, can you imagine how much time and CP I have saved using this Darkling farming technique? Yep, a heck of a lot. That's all folks, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, leave a comment and turn on your notifications bells for more amazing videos. Thank you, goodbye!